The iPhone SE is without a doubt one of the most unassuming but impressive tech devices out there. No, not that one, although that one does still run iOS 15. Today we're talking about the second iPhone SE that came out in 2020, and still remains as Apple's cheapest iPhone at $400 American off contract. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and as much as I like the iPhone SE, and as much as it really is just this powerful little smartphone, the value it brings to the table isn't there when comparing it to the iPhone 11, a phone that's just as fast but bigger and with a significantly improved camera system. The last home button iPhone might still have an appeal for a certain type of user, but for most, the iPhone 11 is going to be worth saving up for. That being said, just because it's not the greatest value doesn't make the SE by any means a bad phone, even if it's got its flaws, and for the right price, it can be worth it. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the ins and outs of the SE 2 and just how and why great things really can come in small packages. Before we really get into the meat of this video, I think it's important we start talking about the rumors. To be clear, unconfirmed rumors regarding the third generation iPhone SE possibly coming this spring. Right now, tech publications are expecting Apple to introduce a brand new iPhone SE in 2022, likely near the end of April, as that's when the 2020 model came out. While there have been rumors of a fancier redesigned iPhone SE that is supposedly slated for 2024, this year's model would have the same design with just a spec bump and 5G networking capabilities. While there are quite a few sources and names behind this, these rumors are just rumors, and it's possible the phone doesn't launch at all this year. But if it does, it'll likely be before WWDC in June. I'm going to be talking about the iPhone SE as it is right now, not really looking at the possibility of a new SE right on the horizon. If a new SE does come out, rest assured, I'll be getting my hands on it, and I'll make sure to re-review this current generation when the time comes. Improvements will likely be quite minor, and there's no real word on whether or not they'll fix my biggest issues with the device, mainly battery life. So even if the new one does come out, the iPhone 11 at $500, I still believe is going to be better value than a similar third gen SE at 400. I could be wrong, but that would be my guess. So with that absolutely massive disclaimer out of the way, let's take a look at the iPhone SE right now as it is in 2022 and why it is and mostly isn't worth buying. The iPhone SE is fast, blazing fast. It's what keeps this phone relevant. It's why Apple is still selling it. And even though the chipset is the same as what's in the 2019 iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, it can keep up with the top of the line smartphones still being sold around the market today. Apple is that far ahead in their processing power, and it's what made the iPhone SE at launch such a tempting proposition at only $400. The problem is that two years after its release, it's still $400, in spite of numerous unavoidable issues that have only gotten more prominent since it came out. I bought the SE2 at its launch, and at the time, I really liked the phone. But I do remember voicing early concerns about one main thing, battery life, and that's still a problem today. The iPhone SE is essentially just an iPhone 8 from 2017, but with the guts of the much, much faster iPhone 11. While it got a newer chipset, the battery situation remained the same as the iPhone 8, making the SE a small phone with a physically small battery, and so as you would expect, mediocre at best battery life. That's not to say it's bad, and for a lot of people it's probably not that bad right out of the gate, but it won't be like that forever. The lithium ion batteries will naturally degrade, and as they do, and of course software becomes more intensive, you might start having issues that you hadn't noticed when you first bought the phone. To check your battery health, if you have an iPhone, you can go to settings, battery, battery health, and then that percentage there tells you how much of the original capacity remains for being charged. Higher is better, and it's probably worth a replacement once it gets to around 80%. Apple stores will do it for $50, or if you're still under Apple Care, it's actually free, so that's pretty awesome. Now, there are some easy options to improve battery life. A portable battery that you keep in your purse or backpack, or perhaps a battery charging case. But neither are ideal. At least for myself, I like having a phone that can last at least the day, and while the SE2 can do that, anything more than moderate use is definitely going to be pushing it. The iPhone SE is a great phone held back by 
by the battery life, and maybe one other aspect that I'm not really a fan of, which we'll get to. Many people would look at the SC and think the design is what holds it back more than anything else, but I would disagree. I actually think that the design is one of its best qualities, standing out in today's world of bezel-less expensive phones. The home button and bezels are actually what makes it so appealing for many a user. Not everyone's ready to move on from Touch ID or go to the gesture system. Not everyone wants a large smartphone, and the SE is perfect for that type of person. I especially think for seniors and those who don't need a phone to do very much, that's who the phone is perfect for. Maybe someone who is using an iPhone 6, but couldn't tell you if it was an iPhone 6, 6S, 7, or 8. And that's totally fine. Not everyone is well versed in the world of smartphones, nor do they need to be. And the SE is about as simple as a phone gets nowadays, even if I do think it is overpriced for what you get. At this point, even with its flaws, it's still got a long future in software support ahead of it, thanks to how fast it is and its status of being roughly on par with the iPhone 11. And so with all this in mind, if you have an SE or were leaning towards getting it, don't let me stop you. It's a great device. Now that design isn't going to be for everyone. If you're a tech nerd, or an uh, enthusiast would be nicer, like me, hey, like, I'll admit it, you're probably not going to want the old bezels and home button, but that's fine. The SE isn't really for you then. You're probably not going to want the iPhone 11 either because it doesn't have an OLED panel. And if you have no idea what OLED is, then the iPhone 11 would probably be great for you. It's a very good phone. And ultimately, the iPhone 11 is better value, as already mentioned. I mentioned another aspect I wasn't big on with the SE2, and that would be the camera quality. It's not bad per se, but it could be a lot better given how good they've gotten in Apple's recent iPhones since the 11, which came out before the SE. But instead, what we got here is the same camera sensor as was in the iPhone 8, which is still 12 megapixels, and thanks to the improved processing power, it does take a better photo than the 8 was ever capable of. It can also take portrait mode photos despite only having one camera lens, but it is missing night photos, a handy feature for taking pictures in low light situations. And we might as well just finish off the camera portion of the review. The SE takes great photos as long as the conditions are well lit. Outside, in daylight especially, is where the phone is going to shine, and the pictures are more than good enough, even if it's not on par with the iPhone 13 Pro Max Ultra Plus and so on and so forth. Video is even better, recording at 4K 60, which is way too overkill for anyone using this phone, but it still looks great. The stabilization is solid, and overall the camera quality is pretty good. Problems start when you take the phone into lower light situations. It has a small sensor, and so it produces a lot of grainy, noisy photos that would look a lot brighter and cleaner on better smartphones. And that's just how it is. While I don't like this element of the phone, it's all in all for $400, not too bad an option in the grand scheme of things. But then of course, the iPhone 11 takes significantly better photos, including night photos, and it's only a hundred dollars more, so if you're looking at the camera quality as one of the major factors in buying a phone, the 11 or better is going to be the way to go. I could also see this being a department that the iPhone SE 3, should it happen, really will improve upon. The selfie camera, on the other hand, I don't actually have a problem with. It's 7 megapixels, which is worse than newer iPhones, but I mean, it's the selfie camera. It's good enough for FaceTime or social media or whatever else them darn kids are doing nowadays. We've kind of been all over the place in this review, so let's go back to the design here. The design of the iPhone SE is simple, and I love it. It's an iPhone 8 with a centered Apple logo and basically no other changes. This means a clean glass back and aluminum frame, along with that solid glass front and capacitive home button, as in it doesn't physically click when you push on it, but instead vibrates mimicking a click. It might sound odd if you're on an older iPhone, but less moving parts means less breakable parts, so I'm a fan. You'll get used to it. It's also one less place for water to get in, and as it so happens, the iPhone SE is IP67 water resistant, meaning a quick splash in the bath or the toilet shouldn't be a big deal, but you probably shouldn't go swimming with it. The glass back is fragile, so you'll likely want a case, but it's here to enable wireless charging, and the phone is also fast charging capable, though you need a compatible charger for either feature. We've got no headphone jack on the bottom there, just the lightning port, and hey, we should probably be grateful we even have that at this point. The aluminum, glass, and small size makes for a very light, compact, and comfortable feeling smartphone. This is not a brick or a chunky beast like the 13 Pro is, though I definitely prefer the thicker style if it means we get better battery life, but this is a pretty decent looking phone in my opinion, even if it's simple. And for colors, we get three different options. Black, which is just black. White, which is white on the back, but actually black on the front. And then red, which also has black on the front and is of course the device I have here. I love this red. It's one of my favorite iPhone colors and I'm glad they've been putting it on so many of their recent phones. 
it just looks so good. The design is simple, and the display is too, as the iPhone SE features a 4.7 inch Retina LCD with a resolution of 750 by 1334 and pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. The same quality as the iPhone 11 or 10R, and it looks absolutely fine here. Not nearly as crispy or vibrant as the iPhone 12 and better in Apple's current lineup, but it doesn't need to be. It just needs to do the job, and it more than does that well enough. I suppose now all there really is to talk about is the tech specs of the SE2, and this is where it really shines. With Apple's A13 Bionic chipset and 3 gigabytes of RAM. 3 gigs of RAM uh, might not sound like a lot to the tech nerds among us, and uh, well, it isn't, but for Apple, because they optimize their own software in iOS, it performs very well. They can crank out a lot more performance with much less memory than is required with Android devices. And so iOS runs like a charm on here, with the current version of iOS 15 absolutely flying, and I'd expect iOS 16 coming around the fall to do the same. Less RAM does mean less apps open in the background at a time, but for the most part, performance for me has been pretty much flawless, and the phone will likely get updates for another three to four years at minimum, and yeah, at minimum, as the 2015 iPhone 6S is still on iOS 15 right now, somehow, and this phone is only two years old. Apple is crazy good with keeping their devices up to date nowadays, and so there's no reason to suspect that won't continue to be the case for the foreseeable future. The iPhone SE 2 can handle pretty much anything the most expensive over $1,000 iPhone 13 Pro can do, and that's no small feat. Any app, any game, you name it, it should be able to play on here, as long as you're okay with running it on that smaller phone with the small battery. The SE 2 is more than capable to suit pretty much anyone's needs. It's just basic. It doesn't have the quality of life features you get on the better iPhones. And if the basics are what you really care about, then the SE is pretty likely to fit your niche. The phone feels consistently fast and smooth, which is exactly what you would want from a budget iPhone from Apple. The most important thing to grandpa and grandma is not having the flashiest fancy gadgets, but reliability, having something that'll last them years to come, while being in a relatively affordable package. And if that's what you're looking for, the iPhone SE 2 is a good smartphone to buy. I would just look for a deal. Now, if you're someone who's interested in buying used or refurbished, going to eBay.com, I was surprised to see the iPhone SE 2 is actually kind of at a reasonable price at around 200 to $250, sometimes more, sometimes of course less. And while I wouldn't spend too much over 200 on a used SC, that's not that bad considering, you know, it's 400 brand new, about double the price. The biggest issue is of course battery life, especially when you're buying used, there's a good chance the battery isn't going to be great. So that's something to be wary of. Of course, I would recommend the iPhone 11 regardless. And ultimately, if you can afford it or you want something better, that is going to be the phone to look at. To get the better camera, newer, bigger design, much better battery life. And the SE2 is $400 new, the iPhone 11 is $500. A bit of a no-brainer, and it does make Apple's current pricing scheme feel a lot stranger than it did last year. If the SE2 was at $300, or even $200, it would be a way, way better deal, and I'd encourage buying it for sure, especially at $200. But as it stands right now, the iPhone 11 is just better value. And of course, when you buy from a carrier, the general value proposition and ratio generally stays the same, so going up to the iPhone 11 is almost always going to be worth it. That being said, the iPhone SC2 is still worth buying in 2022 for the right person. It's just not as great value as I would like it to be. And maybe the rumored iPhone SC3 will save that. Who knows? It's always difficult to predict a new iPhone launch, especially when it's not the classic fall release we get every year. It was like a solid two years in a row I remember hearing about the supposed iPhone SC2 coming that spring, only for nothing to happen until 2020. It's probably worth waiting to see what happens, but if that's not an option for you or you're in the future and nothing has changed, then hopefully this video was able to help you out. To sum things up, while the iPhone 11 is better value, the SE is still a great phone and literally the only option if you want a home button, so there's that. Just keep in mind that battery life for anything much more than moderate use very likely will be rough as time goes on. So with that, I think I'll go ahead and end things here. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok at 91 underscore tech. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.